the market is narrowing to just a few stocks. And uh, even before my time, there was a period called the Nifty 50, and it was in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, and that was a precursor to a very bad time, uh, the 70s recession and bear market and so forth. Uh, so I understand why technicians and others um, uh, look at a market uh, this way. The other way of looking at this is through our lens today. So if you look at what has happened to ARC after two very difficult years, uh, we don't own most of the Magnificent Seven. We own Tesla in size, uh, but the others uh, either not at all or partial positions in our flagship strategy. And we have been able, through the, through the second quarter, uh, we outperformed uh, even the NASDAQ 100, which is dominated by those uh, those stocks. Now, uh, we're backing and filling now, so uh, we'll see what happens as we uh, enter the end of the year. I think interest rates moving up uh, has uh, given everyone pause, and so they're running back to their benchmarks. But I do think our outperformance in, in the first half uh, and it was significant outperformance, suggested that maybe underneath the market is broadening out. And that's a very healthy sign. Our process in terms of uh, our investment process, stock selection, starts from the top down. Uh, and what we're doing is trying to size how big these new technologies are going to become. Uh, what kind of opportunities are they? Uh, and to do that, we use something called Wright's Law, which is a relative of Moore's Law. Uh, Moore's Law is a function of time every 18 months to two years, uh, same power for half the cost in the semiconductor world. Uh, whereas Wright's Law is a function of units. And it says for every cumulative doubling in the number of units produced by this new technology, costs will uh, decline at a consistent percentage rate. So that's the learning curve. And we can learn from uh, the cost declines and by observing price elasticity of demand, how quickly this technology is going to scale across sectors and turn into a mass market opportunity. So we certainly have done that with electric vehicles and drive train battery technology and so forth we were able to get much closer to the right answer there because we had calculated that for every cumulative doubling in the number of electric vehicles produced, so one to two, two to four, four to eight, uh, for every cumulative doubling, uh, costs decline 28%. And the total cost of ownership of an electric vehicle now is lower than that of a gas-powered vehicle, and soon the sticker prices will be lower. Uh, so that's an example of costs coming down, units exploding. Last year, uh, electric vehicle units globally were up 60, on the order of 65%, while gas-powered sales were down almost 7%. So massive shift, weak auto market, uh, but definitely playing, playing into the favor of EVs. We took our initial position when we started the firm, and it, it, when it was $5 on, on a split adjusted basis, uh, and we wrote it all the way up, and we still own it in our more sp uh, specialized portfolios, uh, but at a much lower rate. Why? Because we're very sensitive to valuation, uh, contrary to what many people might think, and according to our estimates, and our estimates for NVIDIA are quite aggressive in terms of revenue growth over the next five years. We think they're in a beautiful position with the picks and shovels, uh, but everyone knows it. Everyone knows it and it is valued accordingly. So uh, on, on this year's revenue, it is somewhere in, let's say, the 25 to 27 times sales range, uh, depending on one's estimate. Um, and we have other names in the portfolio on the software side. And remember, for every dollar of hardware, you know, eight to $21 of software are going to be pulled through, according to our estimates. Uh, Tesla is the biggest AI opportunity out there. 
Uh, it is the biggest artificial intelligence project in the world when it comes to autonomous taxi platforms. And it is selling for uh, roughly, I, I think it's seven times, maybe it's six times revenues now. Uh, so that's, that's a, a very good example and an even, uh, uh, we think that's the best example, but other software plays uh, would include Twilio, which is selling at two to three times, Zoom, which is selling at roughly three times sales. These are all sales. Uh, and these companies have uh, either very high uh, gross margins, like Zoom, 80%, or they have low gross margins now, like Tesla does in the 20s. These are gross uh, margins, but they will be rising because of this SaaS-like model that is evolving for Tesla. They will rise from the 20s into what we believe is the 50s and 60s. Uh, not at all expected out there. My experience with truly disruptive innovation is uh, the old guard, and the old guard are the names that have reached very high levels in many of the benchmarks, um, that they dismiss these uh, technologies, which are simply nipping at their heels. Uh, and, you know, we can talk about uh, Zoom, for example. Complete dismissal of Zoom as an AI opportunity, and it just reported earnings, uh, um, and we have some thoughts about that if you if you'd like to hear them later. Uh, and so, you know, Microsoft just dominates. There's no way Zoom can uh, can go anywhere. Well, I remember uh, Eric Yuan when he started WebEx, uh, and at that time, Cisco, uh, which nobody could be. Cisco. It, it was being treated like NVIDIA is today. Cisco was developing, I forget how much they cost, maybe a half a million dollars. These uh, video consoles uh, that would populate an entire room and do what WebEx ultimately did for a much lower price. And of course, Cisco bought WebEx. Well, Eric Yuan founded Zoom, understanding that enterprise communications was going to shift from on-prem hardware centric to the cloud. And, you know, it is now selling at roughly eight times this year's EBITDA and is a real value stock. Nobody just wait until they start showing their AI chops. And we think that will start with Zoomtopia in early October. We are a great uh, diversification strategy around artificial intelligence and, and how the market has rewarded NVIDIA and Microsoft and left a lot of other stocks that are probably going to be bigger beneficiaries from this point on uh, than NVIDIA and Microsoft. Uh, those are the stocks we're focused on. Uh, NVIDIA has been primarily hardware historically. Uh, by our estimates, for every dollar of hardware sold uh, around this innovation opportunity, AI, uh, we think the software pull-through will be on the order, it depends on the estimate, but somewhere between eight and $21 for every $1. Uh, so we think a, the market and investors broadly are overlooking some massive uh, AI opportunities in other stocks, uh, more software oriented.